Hey guys, how's it going? So, we are out here uh, coming in towards the tail end of the day. Got probably about 35 to 45 minutes of sunlight left um, since it is just past 7 o'clock. Um, been a very, very windy day and uh, there is a wind advisory still out and throughout the night. So it's probably going to be getting very windy. Now today's video is, uh, you know, about this Haven tent right here because this bad boy has been set up in this spot here in the mountains, the, the Appalachian Blue Ridge Mountains for today makes two months exactly. So this thing has been through up to 60 mile per hour wind gust, uh, ice, rain, sleet, and snow, uh, and temps dropping below zero in that two month time period. And I've not really given it a full look over. Um, now I have been hiking up through this spot on the way to other overnighters and things we've done checking on it. So I mean, I have periodically looked at it you know, just to make sure it's not been torn to shreds. Uh, but the last time I looked at this was a week and a half, two weeks ago, uh, before, like a couple days before I left on that little vacation. So we're gonna look it over and just see how it's held up. But just, you know, off the initial glance, I don't see any issue with it other than, you know, the continual stretching of the straps, which will tighten up before we crawl into it tonight. Now, before we do that though, I need, some caffeine right now we are going to be provided the caffeine via this here uh kill cliff tasty blood orange natural flavor boom anyways uh just have tried these uh for the first time and i gotta say i think i have found my new favorite energy drink not like sponsored or anything but these are just extremely tasty uh, you know, and they do have, let's see, a 25 milligrams clean caffeine, ingredients that don't suck, all of that good stuff. Oh, and that tastes so good. Zero sugar. One thing, I cannot stand energy drinks now that have sugar in them. And the luckily pretty much every energy drink brand uh, now has, you know, uh, zero sugar drinks. And I've got a case of these and some different flavors. Um, I was looking, I think, so like this one might only have, I didn't pay attention to this, might only have 25 milligrams of caffeine, which is fine, but that's not a ton. I do have tea, coffee, all that good old stuff with me as well. Because um, one thing to mention is today is just one of those bipolar days where the high today was 65, 66 degrees, and tonight it's going to be dipping down to about 34 and not counting wind chill. So, you know, you're looking at a solid 30 degree temperature change there, which is ridiculous. Um, so that's why I brought my Lester River Bushcraft shirt and that branded windbreaker to go underneath it because uh, the wool will, you know, help insulate. But um, it's not the best when it gets very, very windy. So having that windbreaker underneath to trap <coughs> additional body heat and to cut any wind would be very nice. And brought the Snug Pack. I think it's the Tactical 3 sleeping bag. Well, I'll show you that closer whenever it's time to crawl in. But I still have the uh, Haven Tent sleeping pad in here. Um, and we'll see how much air that thing has held over a two month time period. That's good. Alrighty, so having this thing set up, leaving it set up, I took and just had this thing buttoned up using the toggles on the corners. So this right here still has, you know, a bit of uh, looseness to it and it has stretched a bit as any material uh, like this will um, once you leave it set up I'm trying to make sure I got everything in frame um, and I actually tied down to that rock and that slipped off uh, within the past two weeks so that one wasn't toggled my apologies if I said it was uh, this one I did have toggled and then obviously the center toggle on both sides is still in place the center one is the most important as it is what will ultimately keep everything tied down the straps haven't showed any sign of, you know, excessive wear. Um, you know, they've been getting pulled on and stretched on in the wind quite a bit. Um, and they seem to be in phenomenal shape on both sides. 
The thing that I was worried about the most leaving it set up over this uh, time period would be how well uh, this thing wore at the poles that stretch out this head area. So, as you can see, this is what really allows this to be a lay flat hammock is these poles that go in the upper corners and all around there is absolutely zero sign of wear which is very impressive and this side is a side that's exposed uh, to the most sunlight which you know puts that much more strain on the material but whatever they do to uh, reinforce these corners works perfectly no damage to the bug netting uh, i've checked it over no damage and believe it or not, guys, this insulated pad, and I'm assuming the insulation is what has allowed this to work so well, this pad is still firm. Like, it feels like it's lost probably no air, which with the cold temps that we've had, like down below zero, that is incredible. So I've not tightened the straps yet. So with the stretch in the center, we're looking at, I would say about four inches off the ground. Whenever I was moving that around, I accidentally knocked the, uh, whenever I was doing the rain pile, I accidentally knocked this pole out of the corner so it might you want to set a little lower. Right there. That hole's good to go. Oh yeah, and that does bring it up. So now we're probably about six, seven inches. At our lowest point. And it seems like this lower strap has stretched a bit more since our head area. I can't remember if this was even supposed to be the head area, but this is what we're working with. So, we tighten those straps a bit. We should be good to go. If I lay this way, it is better. So, we could leave it the way that it is. Now, so we'll play around. Yeah, and now the wind is definitely here, and I forgot, so like that's the one thing, is this will catch wind like crazy. Um, I got that backside down with that center grommet, or not grommet, but that center toggle point. And whenever the wind blows this way, it catches it like a kite. Uh, for now, I guess we kind of have to, though. So, I'm going to leave the toggle there. These are tied off to the grommets for the fly. Um, I had forgot that I left these two random stakes here. And that's where these cords have got whipped around in the wind. They've got tangled in sticks and such. Should work. I was going to bring an ultralight table with me, but I knew that with the wind like this, that it would just be a constant hassle of stuff being blown on and off of it. Plus, they just issued a multi-day fire band, and I mean, with the wind going to be doing what it's doing, I wouldn't have a fire anyways. But it has been exceptionally dry this past week, so I brought my alcohol stove. But we'll have to fashion some kind of wind block for it because. As long as I've been doing this, and out of all the gear I've accumulated, I have yet to get a windbreak for my alcohol stove. Uh, that's definitely something I need to put on the uh, on the gear list. Well, it's been on the gear list. I just completely, every time I forget, like, I don't think about it until I actually head out and need it. And it's something I've never, ever used before, so that's why it just doesn't really exist in my mental headspace. So yeah, right now I'm just going to chill out, kind of see how this thing does with the wind right now, with those back ends tied down. 
Uh, and if anything, I'll take them throw my backpack into the hammock. That way I can uh, just kind of have some weight in there. My pack, like I know this pack always looks huge and most of my packs do. Uh, I always would rather have, you know, like a, a 55 plus liter pack, which most of mine are, just to have the space option. Um, so, I, and whenever I pack these with like little gear, because uh, I will be taking this tent down uh, tomorrow whenever we leave and packing it up uh, it packs really small but i've got a ton of room in here i just loosely packed my lester river bushcraft wool uh anorak shirt jacket do jig in the top here loosely to take up more space Alrighty, so I'm going to take and put on the wool anorak. Uh, looking at the weather right now, we should have a couple hour gap in wind. But the temp is dropping pretty quickly. And since we're not super active right now, the wool anorak is the way to go. If he was being like still moving around a lot, the windbreaker would be fine. But I'm going to uh, set up our cubic alcohol stove over here in our fire pit area, uh, just to block what little breeze we're still getting right now. And we're gonna make the meal that was in that lunchbox stew jig of mine in the, uh, the last video that we used to heat up our chili beans. And so we got a Ready Wise teriyaki chicken and rice i believe i've had this one and it was very good we'll move the chair and stuff over here and get things going and i'm gonna sit on this back side because at the moment the wind seems to kind of be coming up this direction So I haven't used this one in a while because uh, I've got two cubic alcohol stoves. I've got this one, which is the very first one they come out with. And they come out with one that's even smaller and lighter weight, believe it or not. And that's the one I've been carrying for a while. So this one's seen quite a bit of use. <sighs> still never cleaned it, but I believe the jets and stuff are still fine. So brought out the nesting cups from the last video. And I'm in the mood for some tea right now, so I'm going to take and get on that first. think this alcohol would catch with a ferro rod but we'll give it a go oh it flamed up a little bit there for a second it's 90 percent alcohol i don't know why we've been having such an issue with it going, I do need. I need to get some. I need to try some of the the heat. That's the thing that everybody seems to recommend. I've just not thought to pick any up. So let that get going, because as that alcohol warms up and it starts to vaporize a bit more, it, it will then start to kind of get drawn up through those side jets. I could take and heat up the water in this cup itself with the alcohol stove, but these handles they're small and the flames tend to go around the outside edge. So I'll just do it in our pot cup here, and then we'll get the water on for the dehydrated meal, or freeze-dried meal, I should say. I 
time that we are going to be having some peppermint tea while we warm up the water for our meal and wait for it to rehydrate. Oh, that was actually kind of perfect timing because our stove just has run out of alcohol and so 16 ounces is like 480 milliliters I think so we'll do about just under 500 or actually kind of right at 500 so that because uh, some will get lost to steam even with the lid on and every now and then you need to add a bit extra or a bit less. You kind of just got to play it by ear. Because my water actually got done uh, for the tea quite a bit sooner. Like I just kind of let it keep going because uh, I was over there going through my pack and just getting some things situated for later. Whenever we, it's time to hit the hay. Where this is warm now, it should light up pretty easily. There we go, and it's lit. I'm really happy uh, that we got this little gap period with little to no wind. Let me go get my spoon. Sticking all this trash and stuff in my chair pocket. There we go. So our water is done. I took and always remember to shake these things up really good like uh, open them up take the oxygen absorber out close it up and shake it up so that all the powders and um, like everything that's been freeze-dried uh, mixes good with the spices and if it's clumped together it helps break it up and then we'll shake it again and mix it up once we get I've got a rock behind the bag itself to support it. That should be close to the exact matter. There's still a little bit of water left in our cup. Dang. That water going in there and uh, agitating the ingredients really made the aroma shoot up from the bag. Let's make sure we get everything out from the corners. Seal it up nice and tight. And then I just take and uh, every 5-10 minutes I work it up. This recommends letting it sit for 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, I say 15 minutes minimum. Uh, I like for mine to sit for around 20. Depending on what the exact meal type is. Where this has rice. Pretty decent sized chicken chunks in it. I'll probably let it sit somewhere between 20 and 23 minutes. So I just kind of take note of uh, the time on my watch.
So a bit of a breeze has started kicking up, but they lifted the uh, the wind advisory, so we might not end up getting the type of wind that uh, it was calling for earlier. Uh, but the mill rehydrated perfectly. And I do remember now, I think it's one of the first Ready Wise meals that I ever tried. You know, that's what made me want to try all the other ones because this one has a ton of uh, like flavor to it without having to bring any additional spices or anything. It's just got like a really nice, sweet flavor to it. Well, yeah, this is super good, so I'm going to get this bag of food in the belly, and then uh, we'll get the old sleeping bag out and hit the hay. So yeah, this is the uh, Tactical 3 by Snug Pack. It's got their Softy Premium Filling and their Reflect uh, Therm. Is that right? Yeah, Reflect a Therm. And then also in here. Got a tried and true Puff Glow Pillow. Actually, since we got the pillow, I'm going to try to take my head down this way since the sleeping bag zipper is on this side. No biggie. So this has a comfort rating of 20 degrees, so we'll actually probably sleep this thing open until it gets windy because hopefully we'll get some airflow blowing in. But yeah, this is a look at what the, uh, the material, this outer material is soft. I believe it's uh, slightly water repellent as well. And then the inside is extremely soft. And I think this is that type of reflective soft material they're talking about. Or they could be talking about what lines the bag. I'm not sure. But I've used this bag I think three times now. And I've pushed it below the, uh, the comfort rating and I was completely fine. Get her boots off. And this will work out just fine. I'm going to take this wool off obviously. But I will leave it in the uh, hammock with me. Because you're, even though this is a lay flat, you, you still do, like, uh, not sink, but there is a slight, you know, dip at your uh, butt and hip area. And so with that bit of elevation in the pillow, uh, I'm still elevated. I'm somebody I prefer to sleep uh, flatter anyways. So for now, I'll just have it kind of down here at the foot end. And I'll just sit the boots on our backpack. The backpack is under this uh, overhang here, um, so that'll keep the dew off of it. Not that, that matters, um, but we'll just leave it right there because zero chance of rain. One thing that is really nice about this hammock is it's got tons of internal pockets to put stuff, so I've got all the storage bags for the hammock itself in this end. Uh, there's one right here. Uh, there's one of these smaller ones on both sides here. So I got my headlamp there. I can put my phone in this one or interchange those as needed. I feel like my legs in here. It's going to look like I'm dipping down to China. Get centered. In. Okay, and that right there is extremely com <coughs> comfortable. Um, 
I know that if I zip up this sleeping bag all the way, it'll only be about 10-15 minutes before I'm too hot. So right now I'm going to leave this part open, just kind of let it breathe. I do got to go up here. <laughs> and yeah guys, I will take and uh, talk to y'all in the morning. Oh, good morning, <clears throat> good morning, guys. How's it going? It is uh, definitely a lot colder this morning than we went. Uh, we went to bed. Uh, the weather took and like it stayed kind of in the low 40s until about like 3 3 30 a.m that's when i woke up because i mean this sleeping bag is just it was a bit overkill but it's nice this morning because after getting up to go pee you crawl back into it and it warms up and probably about just two or three minutes after you zip it all the way up um, but i had to keep it just completely unzipped down to my waist for that first portion of the night because i just it was just too hot wearing a uh you know just wearing pants and this shirt <clears throat> so the sleeping bag still performing very well i do gotta say that in a hammock because of the this lining material it kind of like i mean i can see if you wasn't wearing clothing it would probably be a little bit easier to uh like manipulate it but getting positioned in this sleeping bag with the material it's made out of having clothing on a little bit tricky which um i've not got to fully investigate snug packs uh you know different lines of sleeping bags with this being a tactical three um i did notice that the foot box is actually this uh smooth black material and it's a bit of an oversized foot box, which makes me think that it's meant to where you could have, you know, boots on optional and you wouldn't have to worry about it tearing or snagging on this softer type material. But it does kind of catch on your clothing a bit. Um, so I might actually reach out and just kind of inquire about that just to get an idea. Because I know that they also make like a line of sleeping bags that's used by special forces and these might be too i'm not i'm not sure but one thing is for sure is it to be as lightweight and compressible as it is and to have the water resistant properties i really really like it um don't get me wrong you know i've used down bags and i'll still use down bags i like knowing whenever i'm bushwhacking and you know going off trail and stuff i like having something that's more durable and i don't have to worry as much about it uh you know getting wet so this morning i'm gonna keep it really simple i'm just going to uh eat a granola bar or two and just hurry up and pack up and head out so there's really nothing much of much more interest i can share with you guys so that's going to do it for this one a super super comfortable night i mean how like if you're somebody that's been looking at one of these haven tents uh if i can uh discount code or something just check the links down in the description because i will link to uh, all the gear that i use i try to always do that because uh, i know people are curious and um you know i get out here and test this gear on an almost daily basis uh doing overnighters just field work field tests gear tests and all that stuff constantly so uh i like to think you can trust my opinion so guys, it's going to do it for this one. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share the channel and videos with your friends, family, anybody that enjoys good old outdoor activities and gear. Check the links down in the description box. And until the next one, adios. Mm.